got no ministry training, certificates to say I can stand at the pulpit and deliver what I think God's put on my heart to bring Zion. And um, so just cheer and enjoy it. It's, cheer it should be fun, guys. Being a Christian should be fun. It should not be that we've come at the churches and you know, well, it's a time and place, you know, so just everyone chill, take a breath and go, ah, you're looking very smart. Yeah. Good to see some familiar faces. And some new faces. I believe in back. Some people are looking younger, some people are looking older. But yes, I'm Joel, um, and my parents are Don Brian. Uh, we moved, I used to come to this church for about 20 years. We moved down, felt God called us down to Cornwall about four years ago. Uh, big church there, I'm part of the church, I'm paid by this church now there. My wife's one of the worship leaders there. So we're involved. I've got two little daughters who's Christians. So I've got a blessed family. I've got a really blessed family. Um, so, I've made loads of notes, and I know I'm just going if you know what I'm like when I come and preach, I just, just go off at a tangent. I just I can't follow the notes. I think God drops like something in my heart. It's like you go that way or that way. Um, so it's welcome, everybody. You know, it's. You never been to church before. I can imagine a strange, strange place where it's like a vicar going to. Has this been recorded? Yeah. You know, it's probably like a vicar walking to Anne Summers. You know, it's a strange place. Got people clapping and people putting their hands up. And you know, half, you know, most of the world is not going to clear what people actually come to church for. You know? Why why we believe in God? Who is God? Who's Jesus? You know, is he real? Is he not real? Whatever. So, you know, just open your hearts today and just take you what I do believe and what God's brought us here today for. So first scripture I'm going to start off with is 1 John 3. It says Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. So it goes on the famous saying that words speak, actions speak louder, so I'm the wrong way around then, you know, that actions speak louder than words. So, truth, what is truth? You know, can everyone think about some truths in your life? Like, the truth is right now that you're alive. Some might not be for much longer. Like much longer than others, you know. So the truth is that I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins. On the third day, He rose Glory. back up to heaven, and one day He's coming back down for people who've been born again, the Christians. You know, with that shadow of doubt, that's my faith. I believe that. I believe what the Bible says. If, if the Bible said the moon was green if you stood in it, I would believe it because my faith is that strong. I'm not saying that big-headedly, you know, I just believe everything, you know, which wrote in the Bible, like when Job went to fish, you start thinking, yeah, right, could have a man who lived in a fish for a while, I believe that, and I've seen Finding Nemo, I've seen cartoons working up, so, you know, it's, it's cool. Um, so, uh, as Christians then, um, sorry, back, back to truth, so, my wife sometimes turned out to me, and say, do I look big in this dress? And you've got to be truthful about it. You know, I just, you know I, I don't tell people what they want to hear. Uh, so being truthful, we went to KFC on the way down here, and so uh, we ordered eight hot wings, and we got 16 by mistake. No, no, I'll tell the story again, because it's quite a good testimony. So we sat down, we got all this KFC, and we ordered eight hot wings, and they weren't there where they should be. So unknowingly, my, one of my daughters went back and says, we haven't got hot wings, so we've got an, eight hot wings and we opened another box and we ended up with like twice as much. I believe God is an abundant God and gives us twice as much. So every time you tell my life, oh, went back to the counter, we made a boo with him, man, we just stole eight hot wings off you. And he goes, we can't take the food back, we just took them away. So we just ended up eating them, so we just didn't take them to, being a Christian, I, just, I could not, I couldn't do it. Like, uh, so, John 1. 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God from the beginning. Like famous, if you read your Bibles, which most of you do, the Word is Jesus Christ. Um, so the start of the world, we can talk about the Big Bang Theory, uh, and when people talk to you about things like that, 
So I do believe there was a big bang as soon as Jesus spoke. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I made that up. Yeah. What do you believe? The big bang theory. Yeah, I do. You know, when God said, let there be life, <laughs> earth crumbled. So yeah, I think that's quite a good one, though. Yeah. You know, so, so why did Jesus, 2,000 years ago, come down to this earth? You know, we've all got our, you know, to die for our sins. You know, sins, if you're not a Christian, it's like, what's a sin? Is that where you pinch a pound at your mother's pocket or something? Um, now, so, our word, right, as a Christian, and I'm trying to understand this, so it's quite good. Our words explain our minds to other people. So when God puts something on my mind to tell somebody else, it's like me turning around and say, you should practice more, you should clean up, stay every single morning, you know. Uh, we, our words are to tell people. So the second main reason I do believe Jesus came down to the earth was to give God's mind, his words, to all the disciples that then been filtered down throughout the last 2,000 years. And that's why um, you know, it all started like, with Jesus. And then it got spread out for the 12 disciples. I don't know the statistics for how many Christians are in this world. It's, it's got to be billions of us. It's got to be billions of people. And so, growing. Uh, and growing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so that's start from one person to 12 people. They're just like, you know, the pyramid effect. Ooh, I used to work for some you know, pyramid effect. People sell something. It went down that way. You know, so it, it, it is a growing. You know, there's more people. I think China is the biggest country, biggest nation at the moment, but every single day, you have literally got hundreds of thousands of people every single day. That when that button goes ka oh yeah, I believe. You know, and one day the penny drops. Um, so, so my main point of my message today then, you know, is it's taken from scripture John 1, 37 to 38. You know, and I, I, I believe with all my heart when I'm getting this um, message prepared overlooking the Atlantic coast with 15 foot waves, just sat in my car, praying, look God, what do you want to bring to Zion Baptist Church? I don't just, you know, pick a random topic, you know, I, 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 it's what I feel that God lays in my heart. It says, um, I need a drink of water. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned around and when he saw them following him, spoke to them and said, What do you want? Now I think I've not got the right Bible, but if, that's, if you've got a Bible, it's, it's in red writing and I always, when I'm reading my Bible, there's some red writing here, that's physically what Jesus actually said. He said, what do you want? They said, Master, where are you staying? They replied. So this is Jesus Christ saying to these guys, what do you want? And they say, where are you staying? It's strange. So what do you want? What, what do you want today, guys, in this room? You know, well, what, what are you seeking? Luke 11, 9 says, seek and you will find. Famous scripture, seek it and you will find. If you look hard enough, you will find a spirit. <gasps> Who's got a mobile phone on? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Luke 8, Mr. Church Secretary? So, yeah, so what do you want? It's a spiritual law that when you seek, you will find. Okay? It's, um, how's it been married? Yeah, quite a few. If you look hard enough at your partner, you will find flaws and faults. <laughs> Some people might have to not look too hard. Okay? <laughs> 
But if you look hard enough, you will find it that, that is a spiritual law. Okay. Um, so if see, Jesus said to you right now, what are you looking for in life? What, what are you seeking for right now? Forget yesterday, forget last year. Right now, Jesus comes to in front of you. Yeah, you probably pass out and go, whoa. Yeah, but what, what do you want or what are you seeking? Are you, are you seeking a miracle? Are you seeking promotion, healing, blessing, salvation? You know, the God I know in heaven, there's a treasure chest. You know, to my keys there are many mansions and even them rooms. There are treasures for every believer. Okay? So he goes on to say, Jesus goes on to see, say, come and see. So what are you looking for? Come and see. Come see where this journey will take you. Yeah? Come and see what the next step is in your life. Come and use your faith. See, we need to know, as a society today, we need to know, don't we? You know, we've got iPads, we've got unlimited internet access, we need to know what's happening in our lives, we need to know what's happening tomorrow, we need to plan next year, you know, we need to plan it all out. See, the world system, you know, says you see it and then you believe it, but God's system is believe it and then you'll see it. Does, that, does everyone understand that? Yeah? So, so Joe Blogs out there doesn't know God will want to see God before they think, yeah, he's real, so I'll stop doing what it says, you know. The scriptures say, once you believe it, it's like Santa Claus, if you believe it, and they say it. Maybe not, but yeah. Do you know what I mean? So believe, and then you will see. When I started believing at 16, 17, I was a wavering Christian, it wasn't my life, and as I got older, more mature, read the Bible more, come to church more, believed more, you know, my faith got stronger, you know, and probably stage of my life now I'm 42, I know you can't believe me, um, but at 42 I'm the, probably the closest to God I am in my entire life, and know uh, more about God than I've ever, ever done in my life. Um, so, so imagine Andrew and Simon then, when Jesus says, come follow me. If they asked to see a contract, what it would be like to follow Jesus, you know, where would we stay in? I don't know, there won't be a travel lodge. But what we'll be eating on this journey is probably what we can get, you know. There, there were two people with faith who thought, I don't care, I'm just going to follow Jesus, I, I don't care what the world system says, I don't care if I've not got a sign of night, do they? I don't care if I've got a McDonald's, I'm just going to follow, I'm just going to go my heart, believe, instincts, and just follow Jesus. And they went for it, and then, you know, they didn't know at the time all the things they were going to see, they didn't know the miracles they'd see Jesus do when he was healing, raising people from the dead, you know? So, so I, I, so I believe, really believe that God's saying today in this church, you know, Come and find out what is great in store for you. Uh, when I say I don't care where you are, I'm not saying that nastily, but even if you are where you think you are, there's still more. Yeah. You know? and as soon as we start putting God in a box and capping is what it can do in our life, I've seen God do miracles in my life. You know, crikey, I don't even think I can get paid by a church you know, to, to work in a church. I'm like, Best job in the world. You know, so to wherever you are now, you think I've made it. I know my Bible, I don't need to read it, you know, I'm close with God, I don't need to I fellowship with him every single day. You know, God's still saying, There's more, come on, you keep, keep, keep going for it. T Thomas Edison, famous saying, uh, many of life's failures uh, are people who did not realise how close they were to success when they gave up. Brilliant, brilliant saying, I think. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, <coughs> so I'll, I'm just going to jump to one side a second, just, uh, just to make this a bit more user friendly to everybody. Um, put your hands up if you've made this, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've given up on things. Has everyone, I don't know, been, been close to giving up on your partner because you married just people, mm, giving up on your children because there's pains in the book? Not you, Jasmine. Yeah, but, but giving up, you've been so, so close to that encounter, so, so close to getting that miracle, so close to, you know, whatever you just thought, yeah, is it, is it worth it? Oh, 
So these are some these are famous people. Um, and if you know J.K. Rowling, she wrote famous books. You know. Um, so J.K. Rowling, um, all the Harry Potter films. But before she published these series of novels, she was nearly penniless, severely depressed, divorced, trying to raise a child on her own while attending school, writing a novel. Uh, loads of people turned her down. Now she's probably the most richest, famous novelist in the world. Harrison Ford, ever heard of him? Yeah. Hans Solo, well, quite a famous actor. Uh, he was told the first films, you're not going to make it. Thomas Edison, 100,000, sorry, 1,000 attempts at a light bulb. Then he actually got onto the right. Has anyone heard of Bill Gates? I think he might have something to do with computers, quite a wealthy man, I think. Um, so it says there. You know, several, several, several failed businesses went to all that dropped out of college, blah, 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 blah. Then met up someone and made this program at Microsoft, the richest man in the world today, I do believe. Walt Disney, is anyone? Just yeah. Walt? Might have been Mickey Mouse and people like him. Uh, so today, Disney takes billions from merchandise, movies, the impacts around the world, but Walt Disney himself had a, a bit of a rough start. He was fired by the newspaper because he lacked imagination. <laughs> Anyone who can think of a teddy bear that talks does not lack, lack um, imagination. So I, they, they just, I just thought they meant just to make people know that, you know, if you're not, if you're struggling with the relationship with God today, you know, keep banging at it. You know, do not be a failure. If you're thinking, is God real, is not God real, I, I will. Guarantee, and I hate using that word because I can't tell you the reason why, if you keep looking and seeking, you know, you will find the answers that God wants us to find. And I said this last time I preached at Christmas time, it's like hide and seek. You know, God gives all the pieces, all the information to find, you know, what we was designed, destined, born for, created for. It's all there, all the pieces like Ansel and Gretel, all the crumbs are leading to one day. You know, he wants every single person to be a believer. Do we get an amen? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, I love it. Now, working in this job I'm working in now, I get to talk to non-Christians about Jesus Christ, what he's done for me, how you get to know him, and I get such a buzz thinking, yeah, you're going to be a Christian, but you don't know it yet. <laughs> Callum and Tom. <coughs> <laughs> That's how I would be to shame anyone. Um, you know, so, so I think to, to get to that stage, you have got to know who you are, who you are in Christ. You know, I know I'm Joel Tomlinson, I know I'm a child of God, I know I'm saved, and I know I'm going to heaven. <gasps> you can't say that, yeah I can. You know? The Bible I read says, believe, be baptised, you will be saved. Yeah? If that says the same, you know, same words in your Bible to be a, to be a Christian, you know, I still sin. I sin. I know you guys don't, but I am. I'm not perfect. I still get things wrong. I still, you know, I have to be flicking around the sky. Something comes up. Oh. Yeah, then I'll turn over. You know, but it's and then it's like, because oh. again, the, the Bible I know says as soon as you go to Jesus, sorry, yeah, you're forgiven, boy. I don't like that. I don't. Go on for days and weeks to as if forgiven me, as I think, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have a loss of salvation. No, no, guys. You know, God's you know, word, you know, said again, if you confess your sin, and I do do that many, many, many times a day, yeah, I mean, as a Christian, it's good practice. And I know as soon as you do say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter what you've done, if you've murdered somebody, if you, whatever, God is there, He's quick to forgive. Watches it out, he remembers it. The Bible says he remembers it no more. You know? So in years' time, if you look back at it, all oh, that time I did that, I shouldn't have done. God don't remember it. You know, the Bible says it blotches out and you know you forgive it, and then you just carry on walking uh, as, as you are. Um, so yeah, so we've got to know who we are in Christ. You know, like I said, I know Joel, I'm, I know who I am, I know my beliefs, and I know, know what I believe. So, um, 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, you're a new person, 
The old has passed, so passed away, and behold, the new has come. So all that, when you're born into this world as a sinner, even a, a one second year old baby is a sinner, and that might be hard to comprehend. Well, you know, again, the Bible I read says we are all sinners, you know. Um, so in new creation, so, and then God said, we've got to run this race. You know, we've got a race in life from the day we were born, you know. Um, and I just bring to the point of everyone has already run a race, run, won a race. It's been won, it was the first people to that egg. So everyone must have some, something good about them, you'd be every other million person. You know, the same. so he says now, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. You know, so this is we're a journey. It's not a sprint. It's not a hundred meter sprint. This is like a, a 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And if you look, you're 100. How long is 100? 97. Huh? 97. 97. I can still say, get to 100. You're still on that journey, and you're still on that race for that prize. I mean, you, you could not write that these days because you can't win a race, can you? You've got to um, be politically correct to say to participate in the counts. Because kids at school now, they're not encouraged to win. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I don't want to be one of these nearly people. You, you know, I mean, I nearly got to the top of Mount Everest. I nearly won that, won that race. Uh, I nearly beat the world record. I nearly this. I nearly. I'm the person that, that, that won the race. That I got there. You know. Mm -hmm. And I preached about um, ages ago an epitaph. So on your, your tombstone, you know, it can say a little couple of lines about you. I live near a grave. It's not sad that I have to walk through a grave. But a food bank for famous people. That's a different story for a different time. And I, I really this is like in loving memory worked hard all their life, served and da 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 da, -da. And, you know, and what's going to be on your epitaph, on your grave, on your tombstone? This was Tom Bennett, I nearly became a Christian and didn't. You know, I want mine to say, boom, with lots of O's, like B double O, 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 M, say, boom, this was John who served God faithfully, slipped up a few times in a little writing, yeah, but I just, I just don't want that. I'm going to go, you know, Jesus is going to come back, you know, and, and take, take his Christians. I don't know. So I, I want to play you a song, right? John, do you have to play a song for my favourite? On a jack? Uh, sorry, mate. If, no, I think, anyway, no, so, <coughs> I, I just think as Christians, when we go through lives and how did you find not like some things have gone wrong in your life? I mean, try me, I could, I could sit here for probably two weeks and tell you this has happened to me. You know, not being moping, moping about, but this has gone wrong, that's gone wrong, that's gone wrong, that's what's gone wrong. Um, but I, I just know I've got Jesus Christ as my, I don't like to use him as a crutch to hold me up, you know, but I just know I've got somebody who loves and cares for me, and when things do go wrong, you know, you know, and the pastor of the old church, sorry, the pastor of the church now, Pastor Mike, um, he was saying that you've gone through a lot of things, so you can help other people when they go through the same thing. You know, again, the Bible that I read does not say much to a Christian, all your problems get blown away. You know, the fact that you get attacked even more probably, if you think of people a Christian, whoa, you know, but it's worth it. You know, when you get to that finishing line, and they say, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. I just can't wait for that, you know. And I was just reading in the, in the Gospels, then at the start there, talking about the end times. I don't scare people because I don't believe in scaremongering tactic, ta tactics. You know, and it's saying that at the end of the world, I believe one day, you know, this world's just going to go, poof, gone. Uh, and it's talking about there'll be rumours of war. Nation will attack nations. And they think, Russia, Ukraine, yeah. and it used to be, you know, brother hating brother, and there'll be earthquakes, and there'll be, and I'm just thinking, it's all happening now. It's just really, 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 really scary. 
you know, that was that that, was, that script that would have been wrote two thousand years ago. Um, so, but that's something to me. I builds my builds my faith up when I read something like that. I don't know about anybody else, because you know it's happening now. You know, we're in the middle of something that's scary. Um, so I'm just going to play you a song. Just, just while it plays, it's not just listen to it. Because you won't probably know it. I think we're ready now, then, Joe. Yeah, uh, just, just have a think about the words of the song. It's like, you know, this is when I'm worshiping God and I get to my time with God. I just like to, you know, put some music on, get to God's word. And this song was helping me through a lot of times. So just sit and chill. Close your eyes if you want to see if God talks to you.
Yeah, so um, I don't know how, how much time you spend with God, but do you know if you ever get into a room on your own, you put some music on like that, God speaks to you. You know, read your Bible. So if you're not sure where you are today, I just that's ploy. I just like to say, you know, get stuck in there, get find out who Jesus Christ is. You know, if you don't know him, get to know Jesus Christ, you know, before it's too late. I'm just gonna finish with that. Amen. Thank you.